raise our voice to proclaim all his blessing. He's been our helper each and every day. We will trust him. He has no centuries. He assured us of our beliefs. Let us keep marching as long so in for the mark of the beast to be in the vaccine? Or is the mark of the beast something that is not physical? We will answer those questions in this event this weekend. We also will present the principles of health reform as taught by the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Is it preventative or curative in purpose? Does it condemn traditional medicine? We will answer the questions for you. But I also need to make it clear that we respect those who have taken the vaccines and we also respect those who have not taken the vaccine, saying that they have exercised the freedom of conscience. We respect all. During this symposium, we want also all those who may participate, viewers and everyone else, to respect each other. There is no need for us to criticize each other no need to condemn anyone, no need to cross the line that takes us beyond that which is not good fellowship. 
I read somewhere some time ago where it says that the most convincing evidence of a Christian is his kindness and his courtesy. Let's exhibit such traits during the symposium. I have witnessed many comments during many other programs. And sometimes the people who comment, they tend to tear each other apart. I may even want or attempt to tear the church apart. There is no need for that. Let us learn together. And let us seek to understand the will of God. So welcome one, welcome all. Let this weekend be an experience of having our questions answered, receiving direction, and in all we do, we will glorify God. Welcome once and all, once again, and be blessed during this symposium, freedom of conscience and the vaccine mandate. Dr. Landless is someone who is very passionate about what I refer to, as you will see in his write-up, blended ministry. That is the practice and the promotion of blended ministry and sharing this ministry. It is the ministry to the whole person, body, mind, and spirit. And so you can expect that his presentation will be balanced, and as one who is an ordained minister, one who is a trained uh, doctor and who hails from the beautiful South Africa, and you will tell by his beautiful accent, which I love to hear when it comes to the English, <laughs> but he's a family man. And so Dr. Landless, on behalf of Inter-America, in particular our president, also El Vadusco, and the fine team at headquarters, and by extension throughout the entire division. It is with pleasure that I welcome you and present you to this body. May God bless you, and may God use you in a remarkable way. God bless you. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Johnson. Thank you for the privilege of being with you all and for the very generous welcome and uh, Dr. Henri and uh, Elder Daniel, Dr. Daniel, thank you for your invitation and the privilege of being with you. You know, you might notice tonight, uh, Elder Johnson, because you know me well, that the sense of humor will be a little dull. And um, the reason for that is because I've just gotten off 40, uh, 24 hours of flights uh, nonstop and wearing one of these uh, without any without any break and uh, you know you you kind of find yourself picking up the bottle and then you realize you can't drink through a mask but um, blessed sabbath what a blessing it is to be together and uh, to each of our viewers participants i regard it as a wonderful privilege to be with you the Inter-America Division is never a burden for me to either visit nor to work with because uh, we're all friends. And I admire and appreciate the tremendous work which is being done in that great division, in your great division. Just come from East Central Africa Division, our largest division in the world, but uh, I think there's a, there's a close tie coming in on that too but I bring you greetings from the General Conference and also share with you that God's church is actively busy, engaged, and despite COVID, which is the precipitating reason that we've really come together this evening with this specific subject and the topics that are going to be dealt with because of this pandemic, which has changed our lives. We hear the word so often, uh, we are living in unprecedented times. And as I traveled I mean, over the last many years that I've been working at the General Conference, uh, travel is our currency of daily activity. This was my first overseas trip since the pandemic. 
and uh, travel has changed. The world has changed. People have changed. Concerns have changed. And the processes that are in place have become very much more regimented. And uh, it was just interesting that the, at the airport to notice if you didn't have your papers, if you hadn't done the preparation, um, you were like being present at the wedding naked without the wedding gown. And uh, there was no hesitation on those who were allowing you into the wedding hall. If you didn't have them, um, other plans would have to be made. But we are living in a grand and awful time. When to be living is really sublime. We're looking forward to the coming of Jesus. And what I look at when I see the pandemic and what has happened in this time, I see it as a dress rehearsal for times which will come. I didn't say may come, but will come. And we have time to see that how rapidly this developed, so the events that we are told inevitably will take place will come upon us. And we need to be aware and we need to be consciously understanding of how we interpret the times in which we live and the information that we place any importance to. And so this evening, as we spend a, a little time together talking about living wisely through and beyond the pandemic, I'd like us again to pray. I really appreciate the emphasis on prayer, the focus that this division has placed on educating themselves, ourselves, each other, on so many issues, including this important issue. The Inter-America Division has been exemplary in its outreach, in its building, in its retention. And we thank God for you. Gracious Father, thank you for this opportunity we have. And Lord, I ask that you will hide me and my words behind your face and the message you wish your people to hear. Father, we are living in a time when our fears and people's concerns have driven them. We have turned to so many thoughts, ideas, even some theories which are very worrying. Help us to focus our eyes upon Jesus. Help us to remember that we have a word which is strong and sure in your revealed scripture. And you are constant and you are faithful. So, Father, take this meeting this weekend. And until you come into your care. Help us to keep our eyes upon you and to remember that you are faithful and have promised never to leave us and never to forsake us. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So with your permission, I would like to share my screen as we move into our evening first uh, part of our discussion. Living wisely beyond the pandemic. You know, people are talking all the time, board meetings, schools, medical schools, hospitals, universities are thinking, businesses, what is the new normal going to look like? And living wisely beyond the pandemic is an important concept for us as Seventh-day Adventists. But in order to understand how we're going to live through and beyond it, it's important to look at some of the very basic givens that we have. Life is a gift. We have been given an entrusted life. And just think of the blessing it was this morning when you woke up to realize that you're on the right side of the ground, to realize that, yes, you are breathing. Yes, the sun has come up. Another day of life. What a blessing. 
What a blessing. It's a precious gift from a loving and grace-filled God. And we've been created in his image. That is another amazing thing. And as, as I just contemplate, um, I spent the, this last week working with the new medical school we have in Kigali and seeing again the wonders of God's creation and anatomy, physiology, and the awe of those students as they, like the students at Montemorelos when they started out, and they still are learning about God's creative power. He sustains through that power. The very fact that we take breath, that we can speak, that we can think, that we can choose, that we can eat, that we can digest. He sustains us. And God, we are told in Psalms 103, verse 3, he heals our diseases. You know, it was very encouraging to me as a physician and uh, as I worked with patients, whether it was in family medicine or intricate cardiology, uh, when people would come and say, thank you, doctor, for all you've done for us. And, you know, <clears throat> they would also say, what a beautiful wound I have following the surgery you did on me. And, um, you know, immediately one would want to sit back and say, you know, these hands. But I would say to them, I want you to think a moment. When a shirt or a dress or a suit is stitched together and you remove the thread, what happens to the material? It falls apart. But when God's creation is stitched back together, it grows together, it remolds, it develops a strength, a tensile strength in the scar so that it can continue to be whole. So he heals us. And we need to remember without him, nothing was made that was made. What's that got to do with the pandemic? Pandemic, Everything. He has created us. He's given us a body that is able to do amazing physiological functions. <clears throat> and he sustains us and heals us. What an amazing God we serve. And of course, in this amazing body there are amazing physiological processes now lifestyle principles are foundational to the seventh day adventist church and its health message which is germane to who we are you know it's interesting to me i'm hearing more and more people talking since the pandemic started well you know we need to boost our immune systems oh i'm doing this to be healthy and i'm doing that to be healthy and i think to myself dear saints of god why haven't you been doing this all your life? Because being healthy is not determined by having a boost here and there, a behavior here and there, which may be helpful. It is living consistently day by day, the Adventist health message, so that despite our brokenness, optimal lifestyle practices foster positive health outcomes and here's another very important thing which is 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 being discussed in some of the debates related to the pandemic and to uh, how it can be prevented and treated people are saying why is the church has it walked away from its health message and my plea and my question is who says it's walked away from its health message the health message entrusted to this church is the primary way in which we guard our health by eating appropriately, drinking the right things, by not using certain substances, by resting, by trusting God, exposure to sunlight, careful exposure, fresh air, trust in, in God himself, temperance, relationships. The eight natural principles that are so important. And in every conversation, I, as director of the World Church Health, and my colleagues and my counterparts in the divisions have emphasized first and foremost the importance of a practical, healthful living program. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. And we need to sustain and, well, we need to support that 
fearfully wonderful made organism by doing the right things with it. God is an amazing creator. While he knitted us together in the womb and created who we were going to be, who we are, David, when he was contemplating that, said, we are fearfully, wonderfully made. Who can know it? Well, these optimal lifestyle principles and practices help maintain the whole function of the body, including the immune system. And I would urge you and I would plead with you, if you're going to live wisely through this pandemic and beyond it, <clears throat> I ask you, I plead with you, to live the Adventist health message every day. Not here and there, not on weekends, not on a Sunday only, every single day. Because you will reap the benefits. This message wasn't given to us so that we could be long-lived sinners. It was given to us so that we could be healthy saints. And when Ellen White asked why were we given the health message she said because our work was not yet finished so we were given this message for a very specific reason and yes of course we have quality of life despite our brokenness we can have positive health outcomes even with when you when you look like me bald and short well you can still be healthy in your brokenness. So it's, it's not going to uh, do a cosmetic makeover on us, but it gives us quality of life. It gives us the joy of living. It gives us the way we can be optimally functional. Interestingly, the importance of what we're going to talk about tonight was recognized by the early church in the 1900s, early 1905 instruction was given by to the people who were going to be going to the mission fields 1905 1930 when Im immunization was early in its infancy they were told don't rely alone on living healthfully and being careful use the immunizations available at that time smallpox typhoid in the 50s it was diphtheria and others that came into being <clears throat> But they were told, the missionaries were told, don't rely only on living healthfully, live healthfully, primarily, but do the additional interventions which help us to stay healthy and well. And maintaining your immune system is part of maintaining this amazing body that's been given to us. But there are also some very important principles in Adventist health ministry and practice. If you want to test that what you are studying or learning or sharing is what is foundational and trustworthy health science and health ministry, there are three basic tests that need to be applied. And these you'll find in the general conference working policy and you go to your division policy books, you'll find the same things. The principles are the following. Follow. Number one, the Bible is foundational. Interestingly, we find public health practices in the Bible. When the Israelites were going through the wilderness, they were told they had to take care of their excrement in a very specific way, away from the camp. They were given the ways they were to deal with uh, when being in contact with diseases, when contact with a dead body, to when they were in contact with someone who was ill. There were cleansing uh, rituals to help them stay healthy. Public health issues. We talk today about washing your hands, socially or physically distancing. These are not new principles. And of course, when, when God placed our parents in the garden, he told them what to eat. He gave them a diet. He gave them work to do. He came down in the evenings and visited with them and cared for their spirituality. So the Bible tells us right throughout Old Testament, biblical laws, health laws related to foods, come right into Luke, looking at the example of Jesus. 
who grew in stature, in wisdom and knowledge and in favor with God and man, holistic, holistic, not just his stature, which was great, was in increasing. His mental capacity was increasing. His spirituality was increasing. And we know that because he was teaching the learned ones in the temple. Holistic well Bible foundational. Number two, this church has been blessed with the spirit of prophecy councils, which has taken this church to a different level in knowledge and in practice, which are amazing blessings. And dealing with governments and institutions of learning, Seventh-day Adventists are known for it. And you know, there was in 1999 um, uh, an item which came out in US News Today, which said 10 ways to live to 100. Number eight, do you know what number eight said? Live like a Seventh-day Adventist. And that's been repeated a number of times. Sadly, Nelda Johnson, forgive me, but this is not a sense of humor. This is my cynicism. I want to add to that, live like a Seventh-day Adventist should. Should. We have a behavior knowledge disconnect. We know it, but do we do it? So the spirit of prophecy has given us an amazing instruction, the eight natural remedies, and instruction which it took years for science to, to wrap its mind and its understanding about it. And when they get there, we look back and we see Evan White talked about cancer being related to a germ. There are cancers which are specifically related to virus vectors. And so we see the amazing, and, and I, there's not time tonight to go into all of the evidence, but she was given amazing instruction often told the what, but not the how. And then foundation number three, whatever we practice should be confirmed by peer-reviewed evidence-based health science. Now I'm talking very specifically of health science, of science which is reviewed, which is open for, for um, testing. It needs to be robust. It needs to be done in a very transparent way without bias. And of course, we do know that there is um, some work which is not done that way, which results in uh, the withdrawal of papers, the discreditation of what was studied. But it's important that we have these three foundations in place so that we know that what we are dealing with is reliable helpful, and for the best. There's another very important issue. Some people say, we don't need science. All we need is to listen to God's word. Well, I wish we would listen to God's word. I wish that I would always listen to God's word. Ellen White gives us a wonderful perspective. She says, rightly understood, science and the written word of God agree, and each sheds light on the other. Together, they lead us to God by teaching us something of the wise and beneficent laws through which he works. And I can give testimony to that. I have been so amazed and so blessed as I've studied science, as I've studied anatomy, physiology, pathology, biochemistry, immunology, God is an amazing God, a creative God, who has just gone to the levels which we as human beings can never ever understand in his creativity. So we have those three foundations, remember them, apply them. We have so many interventions in lifestyle. 
celebrations, new start, new start plus creation help. You have wonderful programs in Inter-America Division, which have been shed throughout the world. And uh, I know we've had the privilege of bringing them to Geneva, to Loma Linda. Uh, it's been a blessing to have all of these programs but we need more than programs, we need to practice them. So what is our aim? Our aim is to be healthy, body, mind, spirit, social and emotional. And in the process, a healthy immune system is very important. And there are factors affecting our immunity, our age, the extremes of age, the very young, the older. These are those who are at risk the most regarding immunity and um, Fortunately for most of you that I see on this call, you're in good shape as far as age is concerned. <clears throat> but my eyes are not what they should be, I guess. Of course, pregnancy is a suppressed state of immunity because women, when they are pregnant, their immunity is somewhat suppressed because of the hormonal status and they are carrying a, a second um, person with them. Lack of sleep. It's not only what you eat. It's not only the water you drink, it's how much do you sleep as to whether you're going to have a good immune system. Think about it. All of us who are so attached to these, uh, to these uh, devices that we, are, I think, are married to, um, we sleep with them right next to us. You know, we should have them maybe in another room because it would lead to a better relationship in the room and outside of the room. Nutrition, eating the right things the right amounts, things that also affect obesity. You, you, you would have noticed that one of the risk factors for people with COVID-19 for death, significant events in hospital, and long COVID has been obesity and the metabolic syndrome, inactivity, failure to move, slothfulness. We are built to exercise. We were designed to move. Let's do it, let's exercise. Stress, stress undermines your immunity. And I'm going to have to point this out because there are people who are very diffident about the role of immunization. Immunization unquestionably helps in keeping disease under control. We don't see smallpox anymore. We see very little polio. In fact, the only places where we're seeing polio is where there have been failures in the immunization program. Parts of the United States have not seen measles, but since the anti-vax movement has been going since about 1990s, um, we're beginning to see some in pockets of resurgence of measles and other preventable infectious diseases. So immunization is a very, very important component on keeping population health and community immunity. Nutrition, we don't have time to go through everything. Lots of vegetables, fruits, variety of whole grains, healthy plant proteins, healthy fats, choose unrefined foods. This afternoon on the plane, they said you have two choices for lunch. One is a Wellington cheeseburger and the other one is couscous with vegetables and and as i ate my vegetables and couscous which were tastily done i looked at colleagues just across the aisle and i thought you are ideal candidates to keep the cardiologists in business for a long time we are very blessed that the foods that have been instructed and and we've been told to enjoy are those which build not only the most healthy body, but the best immune system. And these essential nutrients in a balanced vegetarian diet supply all the nutrients that support immune function, antioxidants, stimulate the production of the blood cells and the white cells, help repairing the DNA and the life cycle of the cell and keep us healthy and our immunity healthy. And the essential nutrients of zinc, which come in, notice these, and I'll send uh, Elder Daniel the PowerPoint and you can go through it at your leisure. But here are just, this is a summary of all the good things that are available in a balanced 
healthy vegetarian plant-based diet all the vitamins uh, vitamin a vitamin b6 vitamin c uh, my american friends and colleagues say i'm wrong it's vitamins but you know work it out they're the same thing um, vitamin a vitamin b6 vitamin c all available vitamin d vitamin e and remember supplements should only be taken if you are missing something people are saying oh you've got to take a bucket loads of of, of supplements every day do it in consultation with your caregiver because sometimes supplements can be actually dangerous vitamin b12 is one which i'd like to just give the message quickly b12 for people who are total vegetarians or vegans must be supplemented and even we who are over lacto vegetarians um, as we get older we don't absorb b12 as well as we should or we might so it needs to be supplemented we've talked about exercise drinking pure water sunshine rest fresh air all of those things are important temperance balance in life balanced nutrition positive informed choices and optimistic outlook a merry heart doth good like a like a medicine it's like the little girl who was walking with her father and they saw a donkey in the field and the don and the little girl said to father 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 that donkey must be a very good christian and the father said well why would you say that she said just look at his long face you know let's not be like that we have a hope we have a message we have a mission trust in god is foundational and immunization is not an either or it's a together with know your numbers act on your numbers have your health checkups and we've talked about this as well minimize your risk in this pandemic wash your hands avoid contact with people who have infections wear masks appropriately as I say, I haven't worn a mask as long as this since I've been in the operating rooms. Stay at home if you're symptomatic. Clean and disinfect regularly touch surfaces. I was struck by a sign I saw at a, an immigration counter in, um, in Kigali, which said, do not place your hands on, the, on, on contact surfaces, but the sign was worn out from all the hands that had been on it. Responsible informed immunization so what does the church say about vaccines in 2015 the statement was crafted between 2014 and 2015 the church encourages responsible immunization and as such we have no religious or faith-based reason not to encourage our adherents to responsibly participate in protective and preventive immunization programs and this is something which we have done over the years since the earliest years of our church in fact ellen white herself took the smallpox vaccine encouraged it for her family and her the community and she did it for two reasons for the protection of themselves and of the community i want you to note as we are talking about responsible immunization thought through studied evidence-based and the benefits must outweigh the risks but the church also says that it is not the conscience of the individual and recognizes individual choices these are exercised by the individual but here is a qualifier which needs to be noticed the choice not to be immunized is not and should not be seen as the dogma nor doctrine of the seventh day adventist church this statement was 2014-15 voted in April 2015. You can go and see it on the website, it's there. That's long before COVID-19 came along. In fact, I've had letters saying, why was this put in place? It was put in place because we as a church follow healthful practices. And as we send missionaries out, as we, uh, as we teach, as we do public health presentations, as we try and make a difference through our hospitals in our healthcare around the world, responsible immunization is part of that. 
So the church has also brought out right in December 2020, once vaccines were released, uh, an informational related to and offering counsel on the COVID-19 vaccine. And this was partly because of the many questions which are coming up, the rapidity of the development of the vaccine, um, conspiracy theories going around, some other disinformation, religious disinformation. And even now, there's been a more recent document in the last number of weeks. Um, it was released just after uh, annual council, talking about the reaffirmation of the Seventh-day Adventist Church's response <coughs> to COVID-19. So we have come back to the table. Excuse me. Aircraft cabins are dry. Um, it uh, is something that we have had to come back and reassess and reevaluate because there are many questions. <coughs> Excuse me. So the whole upheaval caused by COVID-19 has caused all kinds of speculations, including misinterpretations of the Bible, talking about could this be part of the mark of the beast? And in the very first document put out, we stated very clearly, <coughs> excuse me, that this and should not be viewed as the mark of the beast. The vaccine is not the mark of the beast. The mark of the beast is related to a spiritual issue it's not a vaccination issue, but there will, there will be discussions over this weekend. And if you go to the, the documents that have been produced, and I know that Dr. Diop will be addressing some of this as well. Seventh-day Adventists understand the mark of the beast not to be a literal mark, but a sign of allegiance that identifies the bearer as loyal to the power represented by the beast. And we know exactly what that means. And we know that it's a question related to the law of God and allegiance to the law of God. Of course, some say that it makes the people unclean to have any kind of vaccine. Our Biblical Research Institute has been very helpful in helping to clarify that, particularly pointing out that certain substances, when used in a medical setting, even biblically, and not serving as food, could be acceptable as a medication. The current science on the vaccines talks about those vaccines approved by the World Health Organization. They have been rigorously studied, uh, although it's been rapid, and one of the things people are saying, well, you know, this mRNA technology, and there are people that are going to talk very specifically about that. Uh, this is a brand new technology. It's not. It's been around for over 15 years. It's something which has been used previously. Vaccines uh, can have side effects, absolutely. But with the rare exceptions, immunized individuals don't land in an ICU and do not die from the disease of COVID whereas those who have not been immunized, and we're seeing this very clear distinction now, that people who are not vaccinated are the ones who are bearing the brunt of the pandemic. Immunized individuals can transmit COVID-19 virus, but do it at a much lower rate. And the current vaccines offer protection even in the cases of variants, which has been very encouraging. And I would also hasten to add, that despite the fact that immunity wanes, both with natural infection and with a vaccine, doesn't mean that the vaccine is a failure. We see the same thing with the flu injection. It needs to be repeated on an annual basis. Does the vaccine, can it cause side effects? Yes, they can be. They mostly of a minor degree. 
there'd been a, a very, very small number of deaths related to the vaccine and uh, not out of proportion to the numbers we've seen with other vaccines over the years that they've been implemented too. What is very important, if you go back to what I mentioned right in the beginning, does the benefit outweigh the risk? And the science, the epidemiology, the numbers are shown clearly that this is the case. Over 5 million have perished in this pandemic. 256 million cases on a conservative estimate worldwide <clears throat> of COVID-19. But right now we have more than 7.6 billion doses of vaccine have been administered. And deaths and case numbers are dropping dramatically in countries where the vaccine is being used. So we conclude not only with COVID-19, but with infectious diseases overall, <clears throat> including polio, diphtheria, hepatitis, typhoid, smallpox, which has disappeared. Immunization, along with sanitation and clean water, have been foundational to the improved longevity seen around the world. And vaccines have long been used by the Adventist Church, along with good health practices, and offered protection against many infections and prevented illness and death. So as we witness this global issue, we are encouraging our members to consider responsible immunization and the promotion and development of what is commonly termed herd or community immunity. Notice we're not mandating it. If governments mandate it on a public health basis, that is something that we've accepted when it comes to not smoking on an airplane. Today on the airplane, not anyone was smoking. They told if they smoke, they're going to be put in jail. They're going to be fine. That's a mandate. I can't travel in this world for the last 20 or 30 years without my yellow fever immunization certificate. That's a mandate. We follow it. I get in my car, I put my safety belt on. That's a public health mandate. But the church is not mandating. The church leaves the individual the personal choice to make. And so those decisions need to be taken as their choice in consultation with the healthcare provider, personal research, biblical practices, spirit prophecy, following God's leading in our lives will give us peace. And the latest document on this from the church gives exactly the same principles. So will we agree on the way forward? Interestingly, and there'll be room for this in discussion, I believe, the studies are showing now in the morbidity and mortality weekly reports, studies which have been done here in states where there are significant vaccination rates, that not only does the COVID death rate and complication rate go down where people are vaccinated, when you look at all cause mortality, taking away COVID itself, it seems as though the vaccinated individuals are doing better in all causes of death as opposed to those who are not. Something which is an interesting finding and really not surprising. But what we need to remember as we go forward together, we are a family, we are a church family, we are brothers and sisters. There are real fears and questions. We need to listen to each other. We need to hear each other. And I plead that we need to be respectful of each other. We should not vilify or stigmatize each other. Someone asked me the question this week. He said, I saw the responses of the church members to something that, to the latest uh, document that was put up. They said to me, are these Seventh-day Adventists who are writing? I said, yes, they are. He said, I couldn't believe it. But I heard the language and the vitriol. 
And I wonder as we live wisely beyond the pandemic, not only that community immunity is vital if we're just seeing the end to the pandemic, could it be that responsible immunization may include our responsibility to protect one another and not only ourselves? My prayer is God will bless each one as we make our choices. There are additional recent resources which you can look at, Theological Perspectives by Dr. Jerry Mascalo, Spirit of Prophecy Perspectives from the White Estate, the latest affirming statement from the Seminary Adventist Church. These are available. And my closing thought is what I pray for each one of you and for myself, that you may prosper in all things, be in health, just as your soul prospers. May the Lord bless you, keep, him, keep you close to him. We're looking forward to eternity together. Let's live together in peace now. So that will be a joy unutterable. May God bless you as you carefully and thoughtfully ponder the thoughts of this weekend's meetings, is my prayer. Raise our voice to proclaim all his blessing. He's been our helper each and every day. We will trust him. And he has no centuries, he assured us of our beliefs. Let us keep marching as long so in Flavor